Good morning. Welcome to another iPath free training. This is using a PDR hail matrix is as easy as one, two, let's go the right way, three here. Using a PDR hail matrix is as easy as one, two, three. I would also go on to say uh, that it's uh, writing the basics of a hail damage estimate is as easy as one, two, three, because that's what we're going to cover today. If you can't see, if you've never seen a, a PDR matrix before, you can kind of see it in the background here. You can see I'm highlighting the outskirts of it. Um, that is a PDR matrix. So that's what we're going to show you today. Okay. Now, step number one in determining the price of a PDR repair, determining the cost of hail damage that a vehicle has sustained is determining what panel you're first looking at. Now, don't be overwhelmed if you're not familiar with all the parts of the car. I'm going to give you a trick, a tip, a secret maybe of how to know every part of the car instantly that is involved in hail damage and in a hailstorm. Okay, so this is how you know which part you're talking about instantly because you must know the part to use the matrix. It goes based on the panel that has sustained the damage. So here is the iPass scope sheet on the left, and you can see, you know, the hood, the left fender, the right fender, the right front door, the left front door. Look, it looks exactly like a car. It just has squares, and inside of it is even more operations and parts that you may need to consider uh, in a hail damage. So this is like the ultimate part guide cheat sheet when you're standing at the car because when you're at the hood you're going to look and go oh yeah this is the hood okay well what's the panel to the right of the hood well it's the right fender you know so on and so forth so if you use this you're going to know which part you're talking about and that's step one so remember it's easy as one two three step one of getting your price on the pdr hail matrix okay so here's the pdr price matrix you can see here at the top PDR price matrix. Okay, so step number one is to determine the panel. So now that you know, let's say it was the hood, now that you know what the hood is and that's the panel you're looking at, now you can find it on the matrix here. And it goes up and down, starting with the hood, the roof, the deck lid, so on and so forth. And then you can determine which panel, uh, which row is which panel. Okay, so that's step one. Step number two, you're going to determine the count. How many dents does that hood or that panel have on it? Okay, and a lot of times you'll see uh, PDR lights like you see in here. You can use a technique called light bending, which I, we're going to go into a little bit. But really, we're talking about counting. You can do this, okay? There's nothing complicated about getting a price off of a hail or a PDR matrix. There's just, there's not, there's nothing complicated. So first you got to be able to read the scope sheet and determine what panel you're talking about. Number two, you got to be able to count. So we've been doing this the Chinese way for like ever, right? You know, so we can do this. Well, you can learn how to write a hail damage estimate. Okay, so here's the trick to counting a little bit quicker than what you're going to be able to just right off hand. Because right off hand, you're going to look and you're going to go, oh my gosh, Chris, I can't see. My eyes are not working right. How do you see six dents? I only see one. Well, well, the trick is a light bending. Light bending is a technique where you find a hard line reflection in a hood. So you're looking down at the hood and you're going to find a reflection, whether that's the overhead fluorescent lights whether that's the barn in the insured driveway, whether that's a power line, you're going to find something that is a hard line. You see a line. And then as you move your head and start tilting this way and that way, all of a sudden, you're going to see that line move. And when it hits a dent, it's going to go. And it's just going to bend, just like you see on the hood of this car, all these little squiggles. When it hits, when that line hits, it's going to squiggle because the, the metal's bent and it's reflecting the light differently and making that reflection go crazy. So that's the key. That's light bending. And it will increase your speed, increase your accuracy exponentially if you do it. Um, so that's kind of how you get your counting a little bit quicker. Okay, so now that you know how to count more accurately, quicker, easier with light bending. You're not just looking yourself, you're using light to tell you where there's actual imperfections in that metal 
generally caused by hail damage and you'll start to notice the patterns of what's hail what's not so the great news is i got some really good news you can miss dents and still write an accurate estimate how cool is that there's not many things in any job i've ever been a part of that are that forgiving um so let's say you counted 17 dents okay i have 17 dents chris but what if i missed five or even ten you're perfectly fine you're still going to write an accurate estimate here's why if you're at 17 dents you can see these categories they at the top you see the number two and the arrow going to the right look uh the category is one to five dents it's not one dent it's not five dents it's one to five anything in that range is one price then it's six to fifteen 16 to 30 oh well i have 17 so that's where i'd be right yeah but what if there's 27 what if i miss 10 dents doesn't matter it's the same category the same section of the matrix the same price for that panel so step number one is you got to find your panel determine the panel you're looking at and find it on the matrix step number two is you got to count and figure out which category you're falling into so here's a little pro tip if you're at 27 dents and you're not 100 percent certain you counted all the dents guess how many dents you're gonna go what category you're gonna go to you're probably gonna go to 31 to 50. if you're uncertain about your count or you're in a hurry and you got 27 but you're like man i, I might have missed some i i might even forgot to count some guess what just go to 31 to 50. it's okay because you probably did miss some and there really is 31 to 50 dents odds are um if you uh counted you missed a few okay all right so step number three now that we know the panel now that we know how many dents we have what category are we falling into guys that's easy right we're just determining a panel count okay so far easy right step number three is not much harder and you can do this okay step number three is determine the dent size okay the average size of the dent on a panel now before we even get into what it means i want you to understand something because i've seen veterans not understand this the average size of the dent on a panel okay now now just just focus on that average size okay it's not what's the biggest size on the panel and it's not what's the smallest size it's the average or majority size on the panel um so how we determine that is not actually average you know it's not the average it's not like okay well if i divide dime by quarter or ha no, 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 whatever the majority size is or the average size. So like if there's 10 quarter, 10 dime and 11 nickel, we got, we got all together 31 nickels. Okay. If you have 10 dime, 10 nickel and 11 quarter, it's 31 quarters. So I just don't want you to be confused. Probably the wording average is not right. Uh, it's probably more the majority size is the right wording. Okay, so here is what you got to know to determine the size. It's not that there's some magic thing. Uh, most matrices do not have anything uh, unique to it, like a hen egg, but there are some matrices that do, or anything complicated. It's just coin sizes. Do you know the size of a nickel? Do you know the size of a dime? Doesn't matter. Bring some with you. A lot of companies have. Uh, magnetic uh uh circles or that are the coin sizes so the little magnets that are like quarter dime nickel and half dollar so there's no pennies no pennies you notice that no pennies okay don't get confused there's no pennies so it's it's it starts with the dimes the smallest nickel quarter half dollar anything above a half dollar is an oversized dent which we'll probably talk another day so that is all you need to be able to know to determine the size of a dent so now going back to the matrix if number one we get the panel you see that on the left side the number one the arrow down find your panel number two you determine your dent count so once you determine the dent count then you go to the right you see the arrow going to the right and find your category of dents so let's say we had 17 half dollars on the hood or the hood has 17 dents and they're half dollar size you see a yellow little circle there three hundred dollars okay that's how you use a pdr price matrix it's easy it's simple it's not confusing and here's a little extra cheat on the end if you keep going to the right past the 300 you'll see at the very end there it says add r and i hood slash liner so 
you know as a, an estimator, as an independent adjuster, that if you have damage on that panel, now I need to also, in my estimating system or on my scope sheet, select R&I the hood, R&I the liner. So you're, you don't need to know as much as what you think you need to know, but you need to be thinking more than you think, <laughs> okay? That's generally the, the thing. You need to just walk through the process thinking versus acting like you need to understand everything there is to know about repairing a car. No, you don't. But you need to understand the processes, how to use the tools that are available to you to write an accurate estimate. Now, this is obviously just the basics, This is, but I know most staff estimators that I've ever worked with, and no knock on them, they're processing hundreds of claims, right? For Geico and, and USAA and State Farm and whoever. They're not doing much more than the basics. Most people don't. Now, you don't want to settle for just writing the basics, but just understand that if you can get the basics down, be able to count in the right category range, uh, then you're going to be huge, uh, have a huge advantage over most people. But obviously, there's a disclaimer. There's a lot more to writing a complete estimate on a hail catastrophe than that. But if you can get this, this is the basics. There's a lot of nuances, and mastering this is something that can take weeks, months, and even years to do. I'm doing it for five years, and I still learn things every single storm. But get this down. Number one, determine the panel. Number two, what is it? You count. Determine the count. Number three, you determine the majority size. Let's go with that wording. Majority size on the panel. Okay? Okay, you're probably thinking, great. You have a matrix, you have a scope sheet, doesn't help me any, Chris. Well, rest easy because you can get the scope sheet, the matrix, and my Amazon number one best-selling book, The Hail Adjuster's Playbook, a step-by-step -step guide to being and becoming a catastrophic hail adjuster, absolutely free. You can get the audio version of that book absolutely free. Four and a half hours of audio on being a catastrophic auto hail adjuster simply visit hailadjustersplaybook.com, get it for free, and uh, that'll help you out a lot on your journey if you're interested in this career. Okay, till next time, guys, keep walking your path. This is your guide, Chris Stanley.